Let me tell you something. About two months ago in San Antonio, BTB Savage and his girlfriend was at home chilling at their place of residence. That's when a robber kicked in the dope and got, there, got into a little scuffle with BTB and his girlfriend up the pistol. He didn't even up the pistol. The girl up the pistol and shot and fired and killed the dude that was robbing him. How about this man get on the internet just 17 hours ago and post the goddamn crime scene? This man get on the internet looking for two seconds of fame. It's so bad that he ain't even get gunned down in San Antonio. They caught him in Houston. Life is not a video game, man. You can't get on the internet and go to taunting these street niggas, man, when you ain't in the streets no more like that. Man, I'm talking about, man, you rap niggas, y'all gotta chill, man. Y'all be on here looking for clout. Clout is the new goddamn form of currency. Everybody want followers, everybody want attention. It's like they seek it, they love it, they need it. And it's causing people to lose their life. The streets is not a game. A nigga will kill you by some goddamn little fame, man. Look, two seconds of fame. BTB could have cleaned the blood up and all that. He left it down there purposely just to take a picture like he was a gangster. When he wasn't even the one that was the shooter. His girlfriend was. She the real MVP. She the Scarface. She the real deal. But just last night, BTB was gunned down in Houston, Texas, driving in a white Mercedes Benz, and he got knocked off. Y'all got to stop getting on this internet looking for clout. That's the same thing that's going to take you out. Stop looking for millions of followers and start trying to find your way to millions of dollars where nobody don't know who the fuck you is, man. Y'all see what's going on where they killing niggas, man. You got to stay out the way. Get off this internet capping and showing off like that, man. This is not a friendly environment. You got niggas out here that you got real killers that be on the internet now. Looking for dummies like BTB. Just to lay your ass down. Anti Afro Spengalis. Be sure to check out two links below the title. The first one is to Nino Brown's channel. I rock with Nino Brown because I love the way he uses the quote hood lingo persona of this Nino Brown character to deliver inspirational messages and to show profound appreciation for those who support him. Then I also posted a video that I originally put up, I think it was about three weeks ago, addressing a situation with no names. And I will continue to use no names. There's a very specific reason for that. But this is a connection to what I'm going to say in this video. What cannot be denied? Umar Johnson's model for snakish behavior within the context of clout chasing. Now go back to Nino Brown, what he said about clout chasing. And let's focus on the hip hop community, which I don't follow hip hop, but let me tell you what I do know. There is a clout chaser in hip hop, the biggest one. How do I know? Because you're hearing about this person, Drake. I don't know anything about Drake except for to pretty much guarantee you he's not worrying about the next meal and he's quite possibly worth several hundred millions of dollars. I wouldn't be surprised. Just so you're clear, money is not related to somebody's pursuit of clout. I completely agree with Nino Brown and Drake proves this over and over and over again. Something may happen. People can comment on it, right? You people commenting on it. They're just commenting. They're not doing it to quote, get noticed. And I think a lot of the comments that people write, like in social media, they're just writing something and then it gets a million views there. I don't think these people are trying to be seen. They're just giving an opinion, but there are people who really try their hardest to be seen and heard. They're unsatisfied with their position in particular, Drake I'm talking about has all this money, but he feels the need to jump up and write a song mocking or questioning Megan the stallion. And this is not the only circumstance, but this is one of the most recent ones questioning whether she was shot and all this stuff. And Tory Lanez, by the way, was convicted. I'm going to do a video on that one, by the way, he isn't satisfied with just getting on and making comments. He has to be out front. He has to be prominent, not 
satisfied, despite what position people perceive him to be in. Not satisfied. A person who's satisfied doesn't need to go around actually creating tunes about a woman who very clearly was shot and you have to question it. It was obvious. And his point of achievement, Megan the Stallion won ham. That's what he was looking for. I'm speaking about a person who's getting more attention than I am, who's being spoken about, who's dominating the airwaves. And now I have this person talking about me. That is what they're looking for. It was obvious for the purposes of clout chasing. Now Drake got himself into more trouble. Excess Tentacion was murdered and his killers were just convicted and sentenced. Drake had to go and make some comments. He just has to get out there way in front and they were kind of trying to drag him to court and his people were up here threatening people with violence because they don't want to take the subpoena. The judge ultimately ruled, didn't have to do a deposition, but people who pursue clout like this find themselves in situations that are quite precarious because of their desperation. And you saw with Nino Brown describing what happened with this rapper, they lose all sight of rationality. This is the same thing with the model that Umar Johnson has put forth. Umar Johnson did the same thing. Remember Kobe Bryant and others died in that helicopter crash? Umar Johnson's like, damn you. You're taking attention away from me. He feels he needs to be seen and heard. So he started coming out with all these crazy comments about the NBA is suspect and all this. And of course it got noticed. Umar Johnson's been trying very hard to get recognized in a certain arena. Umar Johnson does this to take attention away from what he's doing, but there's still attention on that. He just does not talk about it. The same thing that you find in and around the Umar Johnson sector, it's Umar Johnson's model, which continues to proliferate. It isn't enough just to be yourself. There are a good number of people who just make comments when they go to live streams or on panels, they're just being themselves and giving an opinion. Conscious energy is an excellent example. There are others, but I'm going to pick him because of the very specific instances where he was a victim. And I am saying victim of scams, the $820 scam and the anti ADOS freak scam where he tried so hard to bite off conscious energy and still tries to bite off conscious energy's popularity and calling him into question. Who the hell are you to question anybody? Please. Like he owns slaves here. At any rate, conscious energy really does want everybody to get along. He knows it's not going to happen, but he has tried. I want to sidetrack because when conscious energy had me on speakerphone, on Dumpsey D derail the Medicare, the frauders channel. That was, I think the fourth time we spoke, he told me what he wanted and I was not going to do that. So when he called me the next time, I knew pretty much what was going on and I was not able to have a conversation with him and I wouldn't on that platform. So no, I don't consider that a betrayal because we spoke several times and I knew what he was seeking. He wanted it to happen. It just was not going to happen. And I have every belief that he had good intentions. What conscious energy does not do is slide up to people for nefarious purposes, just to make it appear he's someone that he isn't. Now he collaborates with people. Some of the things have worked out, some have not, but there is not this snakish behind your back bullshit while trying to seek some clout. He doesn't need to seek any clout. He was targeted because people knew his position in the Umar Johnson sector. Two demons targeted conscious energy and look where they are now. They have to keep trying hard to build a quote profile. How has it worked out? Not very well. And then you have others who want to try to jumpstart themselves into a position of perceived prominence. And they do that based on thinking other people are in a position that they'd rather be in or they want to connect themselves to these people, regardless of their methods. They will try any and everything they can 
And one of the most disgusting, vile, and snakish ways they do this is trying to link up with enemies of their so-called friends, or they will pursue a former friend's enemy out of spite. And the whole purpose of that is to try to get up on a platform and keep mentioning someone's name who's not mentioning their name. They can go ahead and abandon their live streams because that's much too hard to build their own profile and be known for what they do. They'd rather hijack everybody else's live streams and keep mentioning AAS and AFW and Reb G and others who they know have a stature they'd rather have. This is again about perception. Load up their community wall with AFW, AAS and Rev G and you look on my community wall, I'm not even mentioning these people. This is a revolving cycle that just doesn't involve one person. Different people crop up. They've seen Umar Johnson's model. They think it has been successful for others. But the blind side is the desperation and not looking at essentially every situation that was initiated in this way crashed and burned. The most recent one, Nikki Poop Walden made a specific point to go over to a person who's known for making false reports, known for making false reports and look what ended up happening. Let me take a step backwards. Tory Lanez was convicted of three felonies in association with shooting Megan the Stallion. But before the trial, there was a lot of information being leaked from actual discovery. Megan the Stallion as a complaining witness or slash victim would not have access to this. Tory Lanez as a defendant would. So this starts appearing on social media and one of the people who was covering it was DJ Academics. He was writing blogs about it. He was doing YouTube videos about it. And Tory Lanez is responding to what he's saying. As are other people, it's the frenzy, right? Megan Thee Stallion starts to respond. So they had to have a couple of hearings. One of them earlier occurred where Tory Lanez was told he couldn't respond in general to statements that were being made about the trial. But then he continued making statements and directed his statements towards Megan, which the judge determined was a violation of the protective order that was in place. He can't say anything because the trial is coming up. If he wants to take the witness stand, he can take the witness stand, but until the trial or until this order is lifted, he is not to say anything. Here's the kicker. People were expecting Megan the Stallion to explain what happened in terms of the original leaks and everything. She is on the receiving end of this. This situation was created by somebody else. And this is the exact same thing that happens here with the Umar Johnson model. Different patterns of snakes crop up and they do the same thing. They generate these scenarios and they'll try any and everything to get the attention onto them. And what they'll do, they will make sure they mention someone who is known, who is more often mentioned, however, whatever characterization you want to use. And go as far, they've done lots of things. They'll make a specific point to make friends with enemies of people they say are their friends. But here's the kicker, like with Megan the Stallion, those on the receiving end of this behavior are the ones that are asked about it. Well, how come this and this person is a friend with that person, but you talk to this person that here, you need to ask those who are engaging in this nefarious conduct. I don't have anything to explain, not a thing. I am not responsible for the bad, nefarious, evil deeds of other people. If you want to know what the motives are as to why, these subjects do what they do. You need to ask them. I don't assume any responsibility for that. So anybody on the receiving end of these nefarious acts, how they respond to it is how they respond to it. I'm responsible for how I respond to it. And I don't owe any explanations. The day you see me in Dumpsey's chat, in Carrie Ann's chat, 
in the other person's chat who's accused my friend Gerald questioned me all day long. Until then, don't ask me about what someone else is doing that's evil and wicked. That is what they're doing. Pose the question to them. The concept of coveting or being jealous or envious is only relevant if something actually exists. If something is fake and phony, there will be no logic in being jealous or envious of it. More illogical ramblings of those with the most nefarious of motives who want to take shortcuts to recognition and quote clout. Don't forget clout is relative to the environment that's being addressed. Trust and believe there are clout seekers in a homeless camp. Some big deal is made about going to a chat a few times. Now it's all of a sudden I was rocking with someone. This sounds like a slave plantation, just like King Kong crazy. Once you leave the slave plantation, they want to act like they have ownership of you and what you say and what you do. It goes on. Now I'm sending people to infiltrate. This is a recurring cycle. I keep repeating it because that's exactly what it is. People, you know I have a lot more coming your way. In the meantime, you know the drill. Fire beware.